Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Daniela and I'm welcoming you on behalf of the 2025 initiative to our evenings or today's webinar, um, which is uh, will be uh, guided by Yves Chomet. And uh, uh, the subject we will be addressing is the group of trained observers. So just before starting actually the webinar, we will be going into an alignment guided by Eva. Eve, please do. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. We are coming uh, near the full moon of Scorpio, uh, distributing the fourth ray of harmonious of conflict. So I invite you to gather in silence and to tune into presence. Behind our sphere of consciousness, we enter in the silent place. Through that silence, the great beings are serving and distributing energy. Stimulating perfection in all disciples. And we infuse our consciousness with the sentence of the fourth ray, the sound. And the one with our sound meet in a point of infinite peace. We share this peace in the world. We'll send a home the sound which is sustaining consciousness. at the end of this period of alignment. Thank you, Eve. Yeah. Um, Alexander, can you maybe allow Eve to be the presenter so he can show his screen? I'm not sure if, uh, if are we seeing your screen or is it 
Alexanders. I uh, I can see the world uh, with the continents and some green parts. <laughs> so and it's white a... and white desert <laughs> and <the> blue ocean. <laughs> so apologies for everyone. We are having some technical problems. So uh, 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 Eve, please do. Um, if I may ask you to, to start with the presentation. Yes, I'd like to show a symbol. Yes, fine. I hope everyone can see a symbol with a circle, a triangle, and a kind of eye within the triangle. Not yet. Let me. OK. So now I, I think you will be able to. Yeah. OK. okay. Yes, okay. thank you. And apologies okay. to everyone. OK. Hello, everyone. We'll talk today about the work of the second C group, the group of observers in training. You can see a symbol describing this work. The dot and the circle in the center is representing the sun, the subjective sun, or the one self. The oval represents our consciousness, which is a small part of the all. And the triangle represents the three aspects fully unfolded in the one or all consciousness. So we are only a kind of relaying a kind of the one consciousness in the solar system. Before making a meditation about the observers, I'd like to make uh, one remark, which is the observers do not invoke eye sources which they can't reach, because the observers which are um, dealing with illusion and reality base their work about reality. So we'll turn our attention to space. Space is experienced by every one of us, and space is an entity. We have read that, maybe, and we can feel it. Any entity has a mind, and so space has a mind, and will, in the meditation, turn at one moment to the mind of space. This special mind or abstract mind is the reason why some Buddhas are colored in blue in the Tibetan tradition. So we go for a short meditation uh, about uh, five or uh, ten minutes. We'll send, we'll sing one ohm for aligning the physical body. We'll say one soft ohm for quieting, quieting the emotional body. Sing one silent home for stabilizing stabilizing the mind. We visualize a sphere of light above our head. This sphere of light merges within the mind of space.
Now, we turn ourselves toward the core of our being. The one self is in peace. Silence. From the heart, in the center of our chest, a laser beam stream forth. This beam lights up our life. And we ponder on two questions. What do I do with my life? The second question, what is really important in my life? Now, we realize that all our deeds are shared experience of evolving units, of learning units. We greet these beings and unite with them. And we end with three ohm, one silent ohm focused in the A, liberating spirit. One ohm in a soft voice focused in the U, uniting the world. and one home with the M of Manas, implementing action.
Our talk will proceed in six steps. So clarifying one consciousness, a necessity for everyone. Then we'll uh, observe or study two examples of glamour. How to develop intuition by contemplation and of a symbol of or an object. Then the collective task of dissipating a glamour. Then the nine acts of dissipation the glamour as it is outlined in Alice Bellet's book, and then the impact or possible impact of a group work. The first step is about so clarifying the sphere of consciousness. We have all to walk in the, on the path, and we began usually with a um, kind of um, burden of education which has a positive side but also kind of beliefs and um, coming from our family from our country and they are uh, greatly a part of illusion so we have to work sometime very soon as a child with a light what is a light in consciousness we could uh, consider that light is a fusion of reception and emission. When we are contemplating an object, we receive an impression, but contemplation begins where we are sending our, our attention and it is fusing with the impression. As an example, if we are in front of a landscape, we are not in front of a tree, of a forest, of mountain, of an ocean. We are in the landscape. We are with the forest. We are on the beach with the ocean. If we are listening to music, we are cursed by music. If we are dancing, we are part of the dance. Dance is not something else, a kind of walk we have to learn and to follow. So the light is fusion between subject and object. And I hope and I'm almost sure that every one of us has at least once experienced this moment. The third point is about observation and uh, uh, we already talked about that. To observe, we need to base ourselves on reality. So we don't use imagination in this kind of work. We need a great lucidity. And we are using only what has been experienced, what is reliable. And so we don't invoke eye source, and we'll see that in, um, soon in um, the meditation outline. Uh, we don't ask for uh, great beings or for uh, the uh, logos, the solar logos, or so on. No, we don't invoke eye sources. We just say, I'm thinking the light is with me and I distribute the light. I, this eye is at man, it is uh, consciousness in all, in all of us. So we can, for the moment, believe that the eye is a personality subject, but it is a consciousness coming through us. And so kind of group consciousness, if you want, to use that word. Now I'll go to the second step, two examples of glamour. First, illusion applies on the three worlds. So uh, we have illusion of the mental plane, illusion of the affective plane, and illusion of the operating plane or physical appearance. As our body is composed of 80% of water, the main plane of illusion is the affective plane. And these illusions are called glamour, which means also charm. Very charming indeed. Glamour, we can define it as a, an affective mechanism inflating, inflating the ego, or at least comforting it. So it's not exactly a mistake which can be a kind of illusion, but it is a mechanism which is giving us a nice role. And we are very glad to 
be someone very unique and important. That's a mark of a glamour. As the glamour is connected with water, it is very insidious. Like the tide along uh, the sea or the ocean, glamour is creeping in without we notice it. And usually, when we notice a kind of uh, glamour, it is already infesting us quite a lot. So we have to be very careful about this kind of adversary. There is no frontal attack, and especially in a group, we have to be very careful. The first example of glamour, I would call it the glamour of niceness. It's close to harmlessness, but clearly it's not harmlessness. It is just to be nice. Sometimes I see that someone, usually not me, <laughs> someone is uh, doing a wrong action. I may keep silent because I don't see the global picture, so I prefer to be uh, careful and not uh, say anything. I am waiting to really know the, the whole picture. It could be that it is useless to speak. The person who is doing this action is not able to react to whatever expression I can use. But it may be also that if I say something which is disturbing the other, he will reply and he will defy and challenge me. So it will be very delicate and I prefer not to be disturbed myself. So it's really for preserving my emotional comfort that I don't say anything and I let some wrong doings happen. So, Glamour is related to the motive and not to the action. We can do the same thing, but one can do it in a good intention or just uh, being abused. And another one can do it because his own motive is to protect him. And we know, maybe some of us have experienced it, some shocks are clearly beneficial especially when these shocks are given with support and say, you can do it and you can go further than that. You are not limited to this kind of attitude or habit. So the first glamour was the glamour of niceness. And as far as I, can, I could see, most of the beginners are usually um, attacked by this kind of being nice to everyone and uh, it will be a very it will be very good for everyone the second glamour is maybe less spread out but i would call it maybe the glamour of the all-powerful ego or more simply the president glamour it consists in thinking if i was the president i would do that and will say that and will change this and so on well, the fact is I'm not the president. I have not the right equipment to assume this task. I have not made the sacrifice. I don't know the constraint. So this trend of thought is just saying I'm really someone and I'm thinking and I could do much many things. So it's an affective position and it's really this glamour. Uh, as I'm uh, working in France, uh, in the last uh, presidential election, we could uh, uh, heard some um, news people asking to people in the street, what would you do if you were the president? So clearly, this clamor is clearly well spread, at least in this country. Anyway, it is useful to fall in a trap because we can after avoid them and maybe we have to think about that so what could do the president what do i think that would be the right action now but clearly i don't know all the constraints and all the factors of the situation but i have to know my own factor about my deeds Now, uh, we are going to the third steps of this uh, talk, 
which is developing the intuition with uh, contemplation. It is reminded in the beginning of uh, the book, Glamour World Problem. And at least in the first pages, Alice Ballet doesn't talk about grammar. It is talking about a training for disciples and maybe for disciples of other seed groups. It's based on presence and on contemplation and i have told you that you are the fusion of object and subject when we are contemplating so in order to develop the intuition we can observe a stone a very rough object we can observe a flower or go into a park observe a, a tree and we can observe some kind of symbol this requires contemplation requires first the first stage of meditation which is concentration so we forget about the time we forget about uh, maybe food about uh, rest we just stay with the object the second stage of meditation uh, we have been told is meditation which means we enrich or develop a kind of trend of thought with some ideas, association of ideas, insight, and so on. And university people, students, uh, are learning and developing a kind of meditation of what uh, it's a problem and which kind of solution could be brought in this, uh, to that problem. So the third stage is contemplation. For example, for this uh, symbol, we design a special procedure. In contemplating first the white bag space, so it could represent obviously the field of consciousness. Then we, after obviously uh, several uh, maybe minutes, we turn to the blue, luminous blue, say the first uh, volume of the it is on the seven rays, second ray color at the soul level. And so this ring is a protection, it is relation to self, to myself, to oneself. And then we can turn to the green dot. When we are contemplating the green dot, it is stimulating some brain cells, and especially of the left side, and it evoke a kind of state of mind. Then we contemplate and turn our attention to the blue dot, then to the red dot, and then the three dots fuse or are contemplating together within the blue circle. So it's very easy to train if we want to really develop our intuition and also uh, our capacity to use the mind in uh, staying in front of an object and we choose it as we want. I will just, maybe you see the picture on the screen, uh, but uh, this symbol, the emblem of illumination, uh, is, has been called, uh, comes from uh, the Rise on Initiation as a page 456. So now we'll go to the collective part and really the second, the second um, C group of servers. Once we have realized that our illusion, our good acts, our insight are shared by some other people, we may decide to focus on this kind of uh, to dissipate or dispel illusion. Obviously, as you know, there are 10 seed groups of servers, at least, <laughs> and maybe in some uh, ashrams or in some race, there are different kinds of groups than uh, what has been uh, presented by DK. So if we choose to spread the light and to heal the wounds of humanity, we have to we can also choose to help in many ways but if we want to train as an observer it will be a commitment for really several years 
my wife has said for several lives. It is really a, stre a strain strenuous task because we have to stay in the light while there is so much dirt around. I don't, I'm not speaking about the dirt you can hear about uh, TV news and so on, and all catastrophes. It's about the dirt behind the scene, about the effect of humanity. And you might see fear, hatred, uh, a selfishness, um, anger, and so on. We are so um, spread out in the different uh, TV um, sendings. So we are, the, the observers are dealing with the garbage of mankind. We are going down in the sewers of humanity and obviously the water is really dirty. So we are, it, it is uh, really interesting because we increase our humanness. It's maybe not apparent at the beginning. For example, we gather several of us uh, for the full moon meditation and everyone is good and everyone is happy and so on what are the problems of my neighbor why is thinking what is limiting is what is carrying in on what is its perspective i don't know really if we are working on a glamour we will have to support my neighbor and all the people of the group whatever they cross Obviously, I won't, I won't know their ideas and what they think about the world, but their emotions, their affective ambience, I will share it. And I will have to support that. So we develop a art to art relationship, much deeper than the usual uh, social uh, conversation. So I will, uh, uh, you can see, and I will just. Uh, say the three paragraph of the old commentary and the meditation uh, we practice uh, earlier is really based on that they come and stand within the midst of whirling forms some of beauty rare and some of horror and despair they stand they look not here or there but their face turned towards the light, they stand. Thus, through their minds, the pure light streams to dissipate the fogs. They come and rest. They seize their outer labors, pausing to do a different work. Within their hearts, is rest. They are not here and there, but constitute a point of peace and rest. That which upon the surface veils and hides the real begins to disappear. And from the heart at rest, a beam of dissipating force projects, blends with the shining light, and then the mist of man creation disappear. They come and they observe. They own the eye of vision. Likewise, they own the right direction of the deed force. They see the glamour of the world and seeing, they note behind it all the truth the beautiful, the real. Thus, through the eye of Buddhi comes the power to drive away the veiling, swirling glamours of that glamorous world. They stand, they rest, and they observe. Such are their lives, and such is the service that they render to the souls of men. You can see, find it in the page uh, 151 of Glamour, a world problem. And it's really, the, I would say, the skeleton 
of the basis of the work of observers. Now we can go to the outline presented and very clearly uh, designed by Alice Bellet, which much accuracy about uh, the work of dissipating the glamour in a group formation. So if you can see on your screen this um, pattern, you'll see on the first act, and it is a word used by Alice Bellet's book, group union. So you have three or three people aligned and from their art, they are connected. So that's the first stage, very important. And this stage is linking one another through the eyes because uh, the energy of the souls of the soul flows through the eye. So it's better to have a small group gathering once a month than a big group we gather only once every three months because the affective side and tide will creep in without at the beginning noticing it. It's clearly a protection to be and to connect eye to eye and obviously art to art. The second stage is the act of naming. If we want to work with the light of the mind, we need to name the glamour. What is that, this kind of phenomena, which is inhibiting and distorting this uh, reality? So that's the first gap of the phenomena. And every member of the group has to agree to that name and to that choice. If someone says, oh, I'd like to stay with you, and so I will follow you, well, he won't say me probably not that, but if he's thinking that, he will be pushed away from the, from the group work. We have to be determined that it is really an action to um, commit ourselves and to be convinced of that, because we are we will be shocked by the opposing force. So you see here the green arrows which are from the mind and also from the voice going and this delimiting uh, the grasp of the glamour. The third act is focusing the light, the light of physical act, which is uh, through our eyes. The second, the light of the mind, and we are understanding what is happening, and the light of the soul, the source of our consciousness. The fourth stage is the act of direction. Direction. We turn towards the object, the glamour, through its night, and we project a beam of light upon this um, glamour. And we will, in the fifth act, project our will and say loudly that we want to dissipate this part of the glamour. The sixth act is the act of projection. We use our will in order to project the light and we turn it on the mental plane first and then on the area to be dissipated. So you can see on the screen a kind of gray, which is the glamour overing in the world. And we are making a small uh, illumine area within the glamour first. And we have the impression uh, sometimes to have a very small illuminated area within a real dark um, atmosphere. The seventh act is the act of penetration. We go with our plexus, uh, solar plexus. So we use the crown center, the art center, and then we use the solar plexus in order to be in relation with the glamour. So we are working on the affective level. Obviously, it's not really what we will uh, are looking for <laughs> usually. But if we ch choose to serve humanity, we have to sacrifice ourselves also. So we go deep 
in our affective and in the affective level of humanity. Act eight, it is withdrawal. We have to be very careful to stop um, the contact with this affective plane. And uh, the end of the book of Alice Ballet is talking about uh, breathing uh, technique. And with three breathing, it helps to turn out of the emotional uh, impact we received um, and to turn just to the light of our mind and to retract or abstract to the core of our being. And then we are closing with a home and saying a formula to stay in the present and in the truth. So as you can see, the speech, the light, and the will are used with very much accuracy, very scientifically. I'm not sure there is another meditation outline so well designed. Now we'll go in this short uh, presentation our next uh, last step. Um, no, I don't have any. No, sorry. So I have no other um, picture to show you. What is the impact of this kind of work? Uh, I can tell you about this observer C group because in 1984, we began a group of seven people and we worked during seven years about the fear of death and also, and it was broadened after, we heard about the fair. Obviously, it's very, very difficult uh, to um, work on such a global uh, glamour, I would say cloud, <laughs> and it's not uh, an information technological cloud, but it's really an affective cloud, and it was really uh, dark or gray uh, in, at that time. So we felt very, very small in front of this uh, illusion. And so we have to unite to support the affective body, to know and recognize the limits of compassion and yet to love them. Uh, some of us were at the AIDS, so um, they were uh, going close to death. And so it was quite difficult uh, for them and for all of us. <laughs> we knew uh, what, and we know now, <laughs> what is anguish. And uh, so, but we had to face our fear and not to be titanized and just to try to forget. We have to go in face to face and say, okay, I'm afraid, but it is like that and I won't disappear and I have some uh, basis to think and to observe something else and to go through and see behind that as say the tibetan uh, the light the real and the beautiful but uh, while during maybe five years we were working in a kind of useless or uh, meaningless uh, action we observed at some moment kind of uh, signs First, there was some uh, books about uh, near-death experience. There were some books about uh, talking with uh, deceased people. So it was already encouraging. After nine years, uh, it has been created some units for the dying people in the hospital. So it appeared that at least some people were recognizing that death was a natural process and it has to be faced and maybe dealt with and after 20 years we could see on tv some advertising for the funerals so we believe that uh, our group or some groups in the world had some impacts and it was really useful to be able to know that there is birth and there is death and there are the two ends of a cycle so it was our experience we are going on uh, some kind of another part of the glamour, but I can't uh, talk about it uh, tonight. To enlarge or broaden uh, this scope, 
to work as the observers means to be part of the solar consciousness, to be part of the one self, and to project a beam of light and so on some dark places. Thank you for attention. And now I ask uh, someone to comment or to make a question. Maybe Alexander can talk on his mic, or maybe Daniela. I don't know. I'm listening to you. Thank you very much, Yves. It's a very deep note that you shared with us today. And we invite now our audience to join the conversation. Um, your comments, your thoughts, and maybe questions. Uh, you can do that by raising your hand, and we will unmute you, or uh, just write in your uh, comments in the question section. The art is at rest. Silence. It's, um, from my experience, it's been one of the most difficult topics for uh, esoteric student to uh, work with. And uh, I've been part of uh, the experimental work, working with glamorous uh, in a group format, and uh, uh, it's a group in in Russia and Ukraine that's been working for many years, and uh, that group in uh, in that group we experimented with um, working with the individual glamorous and then group glamorous and then uh, collective glamorous and. Uh, Yes. It seems that uh, Alexander is again offline, so I will read a question from uh, from Carla Muriel. Mm -hmm. So she says, hi all, how to structure the work of dissipation when the glamour has been cho chose, chosen, I guess, choiced, chosen, uh, so, yeah. Well, I, I'd like to answer the question, but first I, um... I'm very glad to know that in Ukraine there have been some, and there are some groups who are working on glamour. And I agree, it's very difficult to work. So, uh, to answer the question of uh, Muriel Karl, uh, the book of Alice Bellet is very well designed and structured. So, it's really useful to, I would say, resume, uh, as we have done for Telepassé also, to resume the, um, the book and uh, trying to catch uh, what are the teachings of these several parts. My, my counsel uh, uh, would be to start with a small glamour, a glamour which is at hand, I would say, uh, uh, usually related to a small uh, area of the world for example, our city or something like that, or our uh, culture, regional culture, or something like that. I, I'm not sure I answer to the question, but the structuration with nine acts has been very carefully, and uh, we, we got and we see the inspiration of uh, a very high mind and spirit 
in this uh, meditation. At some, at some time, we, I would say, short uh, circuit uh, some parts, uh, saying, oh, the final home is not uh, interesting, and so on, and so on. And we come back. Obviously, after seven years, and uh, after uh, 20 years, we go uh, quicker and quicker because we know and we have now shortened the sentences because we know we are using the light and so on. But for the beginning, all the participants have to learn uh, each as its turn to lead the meditation and to discuss the several stages of this meditation. It will be very, very learning period. So we don't seem to have any more questions or remarks from the audience. Ah, Alexander is back. Yeah, I apologize. My connection is not stable today. And um, I'm not sure if you could hear what I was saying, uh, but I will just say my question. Probably you uh, said something about that already because again, I was losing the connection sometimes. From your experience working on individual glamours, immediate group glamour, and collective glamour, so glamours of humanity, how you can describe the difference in that experience? And uh, what do you think the effect uh, of this meditation working with individual glamours? Over. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Alexander. Uh, I'm not sure uh, to to remind me uh, about my experience uh, of working about on individual grammar. I I followed the 14 years of Arkan School, so I think at least at some moment uh, I was working on a kind of grammar, and I lost some illusions. <laughs> Uh, but I'm not a uh, precise picture of that kind of work. So I really uh, am more um, aware of um, collective work of on grammar. Well, it was um, provoked because we were in Paris, uh, which has been called the city of light, but I wonder if there are no other city where it could be called like that. And so, uh, as we were called the City of Light, we were um, inclined uh, to work with the light. And after maybe 10 or 15 years, I learned that before us, there has been another group who has been working upon the grammar. And after less than one year, he was dissipated, a group dissipated, because I thought that the um, grammar was not well chosen. But I was not aware of that uh, when we decided to work as uh, observers. I'm sorry not to be able to give you a more uh, practical answer. I, I think that um, you need, uh, obviously, for any kind of uh, work as observer, you need to have a soul contact and to regularly to go within the light. You may be an individual and so the other people, maybe from your family, will react to your work and you send some uh, kind of reaction and sometimes good shocks. But as a collective uh, work, uh, you won't have so much uh, reaction from, uh, I, I told you, uh, about signs in the, in the media, but um, we have no reaction from the environment. We, we can really uh, see all. The work of observers is not only about glamour because we can we observe also more clearly 
the mechanism of opinion, public opinion, a mechanism of um, the change of mind of uh, a country and so on. So it's not only a work about, against uh, an opposition and an illusion, but also a more, uh, say, more awareness about what is happening on the affective side. That's over for me for the moment. Thank you. I want to ask if anyone in the audience uh, would like to share own experience working with the meditation, with this, uh, dispelling the glamour. It'd be good to hear other voices. Yeah. Martin, good day. Uh, bonjour, bonsoir. Um, <laughs> yeah. Comment ça va? Uh, hi, Eve. I have a question before um, Alexander posed that question. I would like to know what you and your group have learned about the will. And the reason for that is um, it seems that being the detached observer and successfully facing the shadow and immersing oneself uh, the projected lumen self into the midst of the horrors of this world would require the development of the will and the whole concept of the eye is opened and the eye directs the energy direction implies will and will is said to be the goal of discipleship in the new age so I would like to know what you and your group might have learned about DK's statements about that that the will is part of our discipleship training as we enter into the age of Aquarius? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> and it uh, asked for a subtle approach. <laughs> 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 well, um, I would say there is a kind of uh, bias in our approach in, uh, in Paris because our group was called uh, uh, not a group of observers, but we founded the association Will to Good uh, one year after, after the beginning of uh, the work on the glamour. Oh, really? <laughs> so oh. I can't really isolate the work with the will. <laughs> well, I can say uh, anyway that you, we stand. Uh, we stand and we go on, you know, when there was some, first there was the English affair. And when uh, some uh, one of us was seropositive, we had to stand and to support him and also his friends. And um, so we had to be firm. So firmness is probably the first, I would say, attribute of the will we had to, to use and so to develop. Um, obviously, we have to direct uh, our mind at the beam of light, but uh, I can't, um, I would say, catch the moment or the act where we, I, I'm, I'm not sure we learn something. We, we use it uh, uh, once a month and every one of us at least once a week, so... Uh, you know, it's uh, 30 years <laughs> before, so I can't really, uh, I don't remember what we did. I'm not, I'm not sure we, we, we were aware of a special uh, kind of training or learning. Well, Eve, I, you just helped me very much with the use of the word stand. I'm reminded of the phrase, we stand in spiritual being. And DK says mm -hmm. that that is one of the most occult statements and I think this idea of standing in spiritual being as if we were in a great column of light in the midst of the shadow world says a lot about the will and the center of the circle and about the sun itself and the power that does the work. So you've helped me very much. So I thank you very much. Well, thank you to formulate it because I couldn't. <laughs>
Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> There is one comment um, that um, I would read. It's from Antoinette. Thank you for your graphics on the acts of dissipating glamour. Love it. I'm working on this subject with uh, Sundale House and Moria Federation for four years now. They dissipate many individual glamours, but there are so many still. <laughs> Anyway, it's very encouraging that there are so many groups in the world uh, working on glamour. Uh, there are several in the United States, one around Geneva, one uh, in Ukraine, one uh, Sundial House, I think it was in the UK, it is in the UK. So that's, that's nice to see this uh, spreading work. Uh, It's in your work, uh, when you work with dissipating uh, glamours, collective glamours, do you sense the presence of other groups working uh, on the same glamours or others? No, I, I can't say uh, we sense it. Uh, I knew that uh, when I went to Robert Gerard conference uh, in the Titans uh, in the 80s, and someone, a uh, woman, uh, maybe from LA, was talking about uh, working on the glamour affair, but uh, we had no contact, and I, I would say we don't, don't felt any radiation. At the end of our outline, we, after the withdrawal act, we connect with all observers as part of the one self. So we tied. Uh, to support all this kind of work. But I can't, well, it's a kind of intention or emission, but we, I can't say we add some receptivity on that. Thank you. Um, there is, um, interesting and great initiative that's happening for four years for the last four years as annette mentioned that um more federation doing online meditation uh on dissipation of glamour and uh, i um, wonder if anyone in the audience been uh, part of that uh, experiment besides internet that would like to share the experience And if, uh, are you planning to have any uh, final uh, alignment for us um, before we uh, close the webinar? No, I don't plan it because uh, we are um, coming near the full moon and I think the energy is powerful enough for not, we don't need any, I would say, outline. I was glad uh, maybe two hours uh, ago to observe the sunset. <laughs> it was magnificent, at least <laughs> in the center of France. So um, I think we can, uh, we will fuse our consciousness with at the full moon and is the approaching full moon and after in the distribution. We are part of the, um, I would say, aura of the sun, so. Let us go like that in our consciousness. Yes. We stand together as one group, and through all these days of the full moon, we link together and realizing our subjective connection. And we're really grateful to, uh, to you, Yves, for sharing with us uh, about your uh, group work. And um, please um, continue what you do. <laughs> yes, I, I'd like uh, to 
to say uh, maybe uh, some words at the end. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, please. Uh, first, uh, from the seven members, uh, I believe, I'm not sure because uh, we cut um, connections, but uh, probably about the seven, three of us are die, died. So they are uh, on another plane. And we are going on another grammar, which is quite uh, difficult. And we are only three working on it, at least uh, physically, which is the grammar of uh, greed or avidity. We realized uh, maybe uh, 10 years ago that uh, capitalism or the search for profit was a motive of uh, much business. Not all, because there is a kind of social service also in business. But the social profit, which is a feeling myself because I feel empty inside, uh, is really a glamour very in the world. But uh, we are a very uh, small uh, group. And uh, if some people are daring <laughs> and in, uh, trained enough in order to begin a kind of work, I'll be very glad uh, to, to join to some people. Uh, we have a, a website and so a kind of electronic address. So if you want to share some kind of work, we'll be glad to, to share. Bye to all of you. I greet you. Thank you. And uh, can you uh, write the name, uh, the address, uh, website address in the chat box that we could share with the group? Uh, yes, uh, I don't know exactly where, but uh, it was on the picture uh, uh, spiritualwill.org and it is contact.en uh, uh, for English or contact.fr for French. Uh, at spiritualwill.org. Thank you. And we will uh, share the and the website will be together with the recording of this webinar on uh, the 2025initiative.org. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, I suggest we have uh, moment of silence at the end yeah. Be before yeah. we close the uh, webinar and uh, so let's connect in the group heart center and extending that alignment to the Heart center of the new group of world servers. And we align with the heart center of the hierarchy, the Christ. And we extend the alignment upwards to Shambhala. And we align with the triangle of Shambhala, humanity, hierarchy. seeing the flow of energies between each of these centers. sound a great invocation from the point of light within the mind of God let light stream forth into the minds of men 
let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of light and love work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, everyone. Let's stay connected. Our next webinar will be on November 10th. Uh, it will be Scorpio New Moon webinar, continuing our work in support of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This time we will focus on Goal 15, Life on Land. And our next solar festival webinar would be under the sign of Sagittarius on November 21st. We will focus on the seed group of educators in the new age, and our guest will be Alice and Rudolf. Thank you. And Daniela, can you please end the webinar? My computer frozen again. Okay, thank you, everyone. My Bye. Bye. Bye.